teaching, what we went through, and the teachings that taught by a great teacher, Jabji Dunyur Muji, according his instruction, we are following in this, that this teaching, the condensed, the essential heart advice teaching. So again, we do to follow the teaching as always in the teaching said in all great masters also often mentioned that we should really strengthen our beautiful intention, motivation, intention, re-strengthening, both beautiful motivation, motivation or intention of joy and appreciation and the vastness motivation of the bodhicitta and the purity motivation of the Vajrayana teachings. Those are we combined together and then reflect and observe the teachings into the heart. And in this teaching, again, we are going through the context of the three frames of the entirely when we do the practices or meditating, and those are the three nobles. And I mentioned, last I listed those three nobles, and of course, you all know too. So now we are going to do the three nobles. And the first noble is the intention. And that is known as skillful means of the, uh, the intention of the bodhijata and the devotions, and then as well as joy and appreciation. Those are the skillful means. What that actually means is when we erase up those beautiful motivations, it will transform everything into beautiful practices. Practices. All our session for one hour, if we do practices, if we start with those beautiful intentions, really it will direct that kind of on that line. line. So, therefore, it is like transforming the, our one session practices by this beautiful motivation. Therefore, it is so important. And among the motivation, we are talking about now about the body. And the Bodhijata, I made divisions, or I mean, it's not, I'm making that, I can't record the teaching, I mentioned those. And of course, I also mentioned it about the nature or the identity of the Bodhijata. Then we went the division of the Bodhijata. And all those divisions we can, can summarize into two Bodhijata. Those are known as the wishing Bodhijata and actualizing Bodhijata. And that, that's the true body jata. So now we're going on this wishing body jata. And now this body jata is the mind of enlightenment, as English translated in, in Sanskrit is body jata, and in Tibet it is Changchab Sen. So now we're going on the wishing body jata. Wishing body jata is again so important. It is the foundation of the Bodhicitta. What the great master Shanti Deva said in the teaching that we often pray that in our every time we need to pray, I will read this, this, and then and then you all know this. Many of you we know this. This what in the teaching said here, say, say, here. Say. The precious Bodhicitta is those without it. May it be generated. In those who have it, may it never diminish, but always continue to increase. That is what the really the bodhicitta. The first this precious bodhicitta. That is a precious bodhicitta. The precious bodhicitta is not just the only certain people have that and we don't have. We all have this bodhicitta. This potential of the bodhicitta. The present time of our bodhicitta, most of the bodhicitta is hiding or in a sleeping, sleeping state. Now we have to raise, wake up that. We really have to wake up this. So, therefore, what the great master Shanti Deva said, precious bodhicitta, those individuals, individual, or those in those without. It may generate it. May generate it. So how we may we generate that? 
That is wishing bodhicitta. We are going to generate this by the knowing the importance and values of bodhicitta. Of the, therefore, we are generating the wishing bodhicitta. When we wish bodhicitta, when we generate, generate the wishing bodhicitta, how are we going to maintain that bodhicitta? That is also wishing bodhicitta, but same time actualizing bodhicitta. That will keep, is not going to demolish it, but going to increase the bodhicitta, going to develop bodhicitta. So therefore, this bodhicitta is the hidden nature. In a way, it is hidden worry that we then sleeping in the midst of the, our duality, self-important conceptions. Now we have this, the worry, we have to really wake up. This worry, when we wake up this worry, this is not just only worry to benefit to ourselves, but it is benefit for all living beings. But it's also not just a benefit to ourselves, short period of time, for a few short time or a few hours, a few, kind of a few days, no, a few months. When we wake up the worry shell of the bodhicitta, it is going to benefit for us for all the time. From that point, we are the, really the winners. We are the winner. We are on the direction of the victorious. We are the direction and going to defeat to all the obstacles that have been disturbing us so many lifetimes. And we have the memories of our lifetimes. How many lifetimes this, this ego clinging, this self-important, self-centered mind disturbed us one after another. They're so pretending Life looks like going to help us and kind of pretending and naive and hidden, but yet they are the mostly dangerous obstacles to us for all the time. According to the great teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni and Guru Vyamasama. Now, how we can defeat this? How we can really defeat that obstacles for us? but also is an obstacle for others. How are we going to defeat? That is then, as I said, we should really well, let, wake up our warrior ships or our braveries of this bodhicitta. If we wake up this bodhicitta, what is that? Well, the principle, simple benefit, simple kind of call it of this, what in the teaching say, the great master, I mean, the Buddha Shakyamuni is teaching, but what the great master, the future Buddha, the who's going to become the next Buddha of the next time, after the Buddha Shakyamuni said, Maitreya. In his Maitreya prayers, many of you do that prayer too. In many, that prayer said, in the, really the benefit, the power of the bodhicitta is going to defeat it. Or in the land, it will going to block the, the passage of the lower realms. Into this, and going to block the passage of the lower realms and open the door of the upper realms. And it will lead us beyond the death and getting all those sufferings. That is bodhicitta. He said, therefore, I pay homage. I respect the bodhicitta. That is really the bodhicitta. So therefore, this wishing, wishing bodhicitta is the fundamental, the foundation of the bodhicitta, of the entire bodhicitta. Bodhicitta. And therefore, this again, so wishing bodhicitta is so important and we can maintain and activate it that in four different point, four points. And that is four boundless. As I said, I mean, you all know, again, I'm not talking something, new things. We all remember, we all know and heard this four boundless. We even chant. But we, many times we will really chant. Almost we're chanting here. Kind of like we're chanting here. 
Or maybe we want to hear in the West and say, lip services. We just say that words, not really coming from the heart. We're going to, we're going to make that truly is coming from our heart. From our heart. We're going to stand and try to stand at least that short time. Or maybe five minutes. Standing firmly on the world, what we say of firmly behind the, that meaning of that. We're trying to stay behind the meaning of the world, what we're chanting. Chanting. Then it's become the boundless. Had no boundaries. Boundless means no boundaries. Person day or person time, also we have love, we have compassion, we have joy. But it's all limited. It's with border. It's not really limitless. Everything is border. It's blocked. Our love is limited. Our compassion is limited. Our joy is rejoice is limited. And our equanimity is very, very limited. That's the really what we are now. But this time, we are opening the door of these qualities. Reality, the love has no border. Compassion has no border. Rejoice has no border. And equanimity has no border. Why? Because mind has no border. It's mind. Nature of the mind. You read, our sorrow, each of us read, does our mind have border? No. There is no way we can have, there is the border of the mind. That is what. But who is who put borders? It's our deluded mind or the ego claiming, self-important, trying to shrink in the strange of that. It's knocking our own fist to our own head. Head making that. We're not letting the way the nature is. Nature of mind. Therefore, the gracious, kindness, compassion, wise teacher, Buddha opened the door for all living beings. Love for all living beings. Compassion for all living beings. Rejoice, joy for all living beings. And equanimity, no borders. So that is what really the boundless. Every, again, why is it boundless in the teaching? He said, because the love or this quality has no borders. But when this, where, we, where we project that love, this poor boundless, Love and compassion, what's this? We are not limited for the projection or the object. Our object is we're talking all the sentient beings. But is there a number of the sentient beings? According to Buddhism, there is no numbers. It is, for example, is there borders of the sky or space? According to Buddha's teaching, there is no borders, no boundaries of the sky. Similarly, the sentient beings are vastness as space. Sentient beings, all the beings. If you don't know the sentient beings, beings. B E I N G. Being has no limitation, no numbers. It's numberless. And each of those living beings has, oh, everyone has emotions. Everyone has karma. Emotion is karma. That is the cause of suffering and difficulties. Everyone is struggling. The numberless beings are struggling with their own creation of the karma and the emotions, or emotion is karma. Therefore, our love and compassion matched to all that beings. For that reason, it is also known as boundless love. Because it's objected or projected to all those beings, numberless beings. 
Then in the teaching said, the gracious teacher Buddha Shakyamuni said in the teaching, said power and the benefit of the love and compassion that is boundless. Because it's a, the love is boundless, projection is boundless, and the benefit is boundless. Benefit to who? To whom? Benefit to all those beings. And benefit to one's own self. Is boundless, is limitless. Therefore, it is known as boundless. Boundless love, boundless sentient beings, boundless result and benefit. Benefit, one another. This benefit is not just a short period of the benefit, but this is, in the teaching said, what? It goes on. If the day is like kind of space, the body just benefit of the body that if we put on the tangible kind of forms that we put, the sky is not enough to fit all the benefits. That even the sky will be cannot hold the power and benefit or result of the body jada, or the soul plus of the body jada, cannot be hold by the hold or the feet all that in the sky. That's really the, how the power is. This the body that is the one who is going to defeat all our karmas, negativities, obscurations, obstacles, the hindrance that which we, we, we accumulated the fire up from the beginless time until now. That is going to buy, clay away, knocked away without any trace by this precious body jada. Therefore, this body jada is so, so, so special. For that reason, I said the other day, and you heard this also many times, great master, Papua Ramboji said, and this is just again some, one thing. If you have one thing, that is enough, which is body jada. That means if you have one thing, if you have one practice, that will be enough to get enlightenment or become Buddha, that is Bodhicitta. If you don't have this one thing of the Bodhicitta, no matter whatever the practice, fancy name, the titles, practices, this and that things, is all not going to go to the direction of the enlightenment because it's connected, self-important. Self-important. And it is grasping and clinging. We've been doing self-important activity according to Buddha's teaching from the biggest time. There is even no numbers of our lives, how many times we talk about. It is really numberless. And that time we're doing. But what we gain, still we're struggling, still we're challenging, still we are completely crushed by all these difficulties, hopes and fears. Kind of constantly one after another we're doing. Never really had any kind of like, for, for example, like permanent solution of the peace and happy. Oh wow, now I'm just relaxed, I can stay peace and happiness and peaceful. Even we get troubles and difficulties, we, we are going to, for, for example, in a cruise shapes. We are considering the best place to have vacation and relax and enjoy. Ended up the troubles. All <laughs> vacation lands, all the different places. Even with, I mean, that is considered in, in a samsara, those are very luxurious, high standards. And the fancy house, penthouse, sitting in the drop top, top the best with the jacuzzi and hot tub and the swimming pool and everything. But yet, what they're going through, the emotionally, mentally, psychologically, so many people, those who sit in the almost looks like cage, caged on the glasses, all those places. But again, in, Reality, they are going all the pain. What's wrong? What's happening? Because of this, according to Buddha's teaching, our, we couldn't keep up this, control this ego clinging, mind and habit pattern. It is self-important. The self-important mind, ego clinging, so it's like greed. It's never enough. Never enough. Even if you have the best, still is not enough. That goes on and on, one after another. That's the what it is. So for those reasons, we build, we raise up the bodhi jata, the precious bodhi jata. 
the four boundless, start with the four boundless. And now again, I'm going to talk with the four boundless, as I said yesterday, and continually. And yesterday I spoke with the boundless love, love and boundless compassions. Now, boundless love, when we put that in a praise and practice that, and practice and that is the may all living be all living be all what how giant in a, in a, in a, in a, some in the way practices in a, in a sadness may all mother living beings have happiness and cause of happiness may all mother living beings have the happiness and cause of happiness now happiness we know that is we know but what is cause of happiness? Cause of happiness is loving kindness itself is cause of happiness. And compassion is, is cause of happiness. Wisdom is cause of, of happiness. And therefore, we are going to pray they have always happiness, but at the same time, wishing to their happiness remains forever because of the cause. If they have the continually, every living have the continually see love and kindness, compassion, and wisdom in their heart and mind, their love or their happiness, their peace, their relaxation will last so long, forever. Therefore, when Bodhisattvas, Sattvas, when we develop the body, we pray, not just for the, 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 the happiness now, but also for future continuities. And what did the, in the teaching say? We are praying for the cause and the result and conditions, both. We pray for the cause, we pray for the compassion or result. The cause of, of, the, of love and compassion will produce the result of happiness. That is what it is. So therefore, we pray. And the next one is the compassion. May all mother living beings free from suffering and cause of sufferings. Now, we know the suffering. That is a result. So many people are going through that. Through that, we are all going through. Some duty up and down. We are all going through. That is the result. That is the present of situations. But what the cause of that is according to Buddha's teaching. That cause is the negative emotions. And it is an action known as karma. Karma and negative emotions are the cause. That is really the cause of all the sufferings. So this prayer generally, may all living beings are free from suffering, cause of suffering, is also prayer, one way to say that what a gracious teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni said, suffering truth, cause of suffering truth, among four noble truth. This is the first true truth, the suffering truth. And the suffering truth is not going to arise without any cause and condition. Condition is not just a boom like that. It has cause, it has condition. It is sizzling behind the scene for a long time, then bore the sufferings. That is what. And that cause and condition is negative emotions. Negative emotions. And what are those negative emotions? Of course, we all know the names. The what is anger, attachment, and the jealous, hated thought. Those are the front runner. Behind is the ignorance and the ego claims. Those are the behind the scene of the negative emotions. They are the fundamental, they are the cause. But that producing, that when it is activated, that, then it comes. When anger and ignorance are activated when it comes to the action, then it comes with as attachment and aggressions, anger, jealousness, hatred, thought, 
then all those are kind of bursted. Then what it does? Then he called the Buddhist the Buddha's teaching was named and then it happened action. Consequence. That is karma. Karma is a Sanskrit word, it means action, activity, perform. But that action and what that did is not wrong there. The residue, the result, imprint of the, that action remains long time. It remains to the way it's objected, projected, it remains for why? But more than that, it remains in our consciousness, according to Buddhism, Buddha's teaching, in our ally and mental state, or subconscious storehouse, or our subconscious storehouse of the space of the mind, will remain for a long time. Long time. Then it's going to activate it, more activities. Then it becomes cause of suffering truth. So this time when we pray this bodhicitta, boneless compassion, we pray that may all living beings free from the sufferings. Whatever they are going through, whatever the troubles, getting old, sicknesses, losing jobs, or whatever, depression, psychological, mental problems, loneliness, and what anxiety, whatever troubles, or fears, and all those, and that any troubles, all the whatever troubles of the old beings going through, hey, the hell realm, and hungry ghost realms, animal realms, human realms, asura realms, God's realms, whatever they are going, may they all finish, may all that. And that not just only the cause of those sufferings, completely finished. May all living beings have the free from the suffering, cause of suffering. Suffering truths. And that is known as boundless compassion prayers. Compassion. It is that. And this again, this loving kindness and compassion, these all are great, powerful meditation, powerful mindfulness practices. When you have really intention, that beautiful thought in your our heart and mind, relax our mind. Chant that prayer, even chant that prayer and stay with our mind and heart behind that word, meaning, meaning is relaxed, it's so calming, it's a soothing, it's relaxing. You're self-centered at that time, or your self-own being, true nature, you're touching to your own heart, your own nature colors, your own beauties. It's so powerful, so beneficial, it's also so refreshing, refreshing, it's really so powerful. If we really think that and then look to the horizon of the sky in the space or cloud, clothes of the trees and, and uh, the oceans so or whatever you look and look horizontally and chant that, reflecting the, your mind, heart with those old meaning and relax that. It is powerful. The moment you can feel power and benefit, but deep down according to that thing, it purifies obscurations. Obstacles, habit pattern, cleaning our karmas, negativities. He created the beautiful vibration energies to the universe and earth. And all the invisible beings will feel, animals will feel your love and compassion. Compassion, really, truly. It's not just saying those things. You can tell that. And then when you look around the nature, it has new dimensions, new images that you begin to explore the beauty of this. Do you see, you can test yourself, truly. It is, you're touching to your own nature, but at the same time, because of that, you see the beauty of the nature, of the external way things are. And then next one, it's boundless. <coughs> boundless, rejoicing joy. How we do that prayer? May all mother living beings have always happiness, never separated from that supreme happiness. That is rejoice or the joy, prayer of the joys. So again, this is boundless, again, prayer of the boundless joy. This joy 
is so again so powerful it is joy is the opposite of the jealousness and the opposite of the challenges and those resentment attitudes and we feel happy and joy because why we pray always may all living beings are free from suffering and cause of sufferings and may all they have happiness and cause of happiness now they are having some duty they are having whether this power of our prayers or power of their own activity in the prayers or power of the blessings of the buddhas or the enlightened beings whatever is those individuals are having some fulfillment enjoyment therefore feel happy joy in one way is it is also sign of a fulfillment of our own aspiration pray because we pray every living being to have happiness and now they have some happiness instead of happiness many times this ego clinging this substance in the mind is kind of kind of bear that those things sometimes you feel bad i don't want that i don't like to see they happy please that is jealousness but that jealous what going to help us hubble is knocking our head to our own our own feet by our own feet we are knocking to our own head head is not going to do anything it's hurting to us the temple us is hurting us now is hurting us in deep down we create negative karma instead of that really this mother sent in beings whoever they are they are having some fulfillment and happiness and joy so happy that's their good karma they their good fortune good and they also we pray now sometimes we see see maybe we did too some part some little contribution toward that toward that very indirectly that and you should be happy our deed all blessings as i say blessing of the buddhas and bodhis in like me they fulfill a good good but we their happiness lasts for a long time become more smooth more happiness more peace of environment to the others who over they contact that really wish in pray that is known as then pray practice of the boundless joy this is and then next one is the boundless equanimity Equanimity is again we we all in many levels we all equal. We what means we all? We all living beings are equal. What in the teaching said? Emotional level we are equal. Feeling level we we are equal. Desire level we are equal. So we are all equal. In the emotional level, we are equal. Means everyone want to be happy. Everyone want to be have peaceful. Everyone to be have performance. So that is the emotional level. We are all equal. Equal. There is no really head difference. No body like the suffering. No body like the sadness. No body like the criticize. nobody like to be dead nobody like to be pushed away or pushed down i mean all the same and the feeling level is same nobody want to want somebody beat us or somebody torture us that i mean same one and also we like be happy feeling peace of feeling environment nice feeling level is same i mean you can go through that all everyone is equal so physical mentally emotional level biological level we all eco who are on this earth all ecos then the what we share is also eco all element is the same shared with equally by the fire we share the warmth same warmth we share same air we share the same sky or space we share the same wind we all need water we all need earth earth 
We all need everything, whatever we, we need, they need everything. So what is really difference? Difference, reality level. So mental level from ego, emotion level ego, what we share, the living good level, livelihood level ego, there is no difference. Ego, same. So therefore, all of everyone is ego. But however, even everyone is ego, we don't see that true picture, what we things are, because of our ego claim, self-important. We make so many territories, territories, and so many divisions, so many parts, good, bad, friend, enemy, close ones, distance ones, now all that, really we make hard. And maybe that's true, some are close, some are distant, but we go, we act so strongly with that. And then we make kind of like friends and enemies and all that. And so many different things. But who is making that? By our ego clinging, self-important. And who is that? Fundamentally is our mind. Mind is making. All those divisions, reality level, mind itself is empty. Where is those in the mental status? The enemy, friend, this and that. I mean, it's, where is that? There is no one came with the sign of the enemies. Enemies. There is no one came sign or label or title of friends. Is all nominated by our mind. Our mind, the emptiness mind, is mind. Since it's not existing at all, it also changes. Enemy can become the best friends. Best friend can become best enemy because it's play, play game of the mind. Then hold on that. So reality level really is all blended in, same, equal, equal lady status. Our mind is making all those games, and mind is making all those territories, and mind is making then consequences, argue, we are creating so many habit patterns, one after another, is blocking the beauty of our mind, our nature of the mind, black, blocking that shining of love and compassion, making those territories of the ego clean. Then it makes it more troubles to us, to all the beings. So therefore, being wise and therefore bring the equanimity, this realization is so important. For that reason, may I pre may I have the how we join that prayers and may all have the great equanimity realization uh, close uh, at, uh, uh, attached to the close ones and the rejection attitude toward other beings. But how it translated? May with they remain, may they remain, or may we remain. I mean here translated the day, but it's we. May we or may I, may I remain in the boundless equanimity, free from both attachment to those close ones and rejection of others. That is, may we remain. So this is again uh, translated here, maybe there is not, uh, uh, exactly is really correct, I believe, my, my understanding of English, because it's the may I remain, or may we all remain in the boundless, not just a day. That means it looks like I don't need myself. But we all need this until until we get the Buddhahood or some a Buddha is praying this one, maybe Buddha can say we this mean to all that. But I think so. until the Buddha we reach enlightenment, we should pray to ourselves too. So we should remain in this circle. But we try remain in, in this stadium or rain. We should remain in our rain. We all need this prayers. May we remain in the boundless equanimity, free from both attachment to the close ones 
and the rejection of others. That is really the praise. And it, so this is, the, I've mentioned, really about now, poor boneless. Of course, we all know this, nothing. But this is the one we accord in the practices when you see that. But many, and the teaching says that when you practice this, you should start with contemplating on the equanimity first. If we don't do the equanimity first, first in the teaching often say, then the boneless love, boneless compassion, boneless uh, rejoice won't come so boneless. Therefore, start with equanimity. Equanimity when you put in practice, when you meditate in that. So first, that is I mean, what I say today is like like just a prayer, then. but also this is the meditation, meditate this and a loving kindness, and meditating on the compassion, meditating on the rejoice and the joy, meditating on the equanimity, and meditating on the equanimity first. We all equal, everyone is equal, as myself and as everyone. Really, that equanimity, all those teachings you put bring up more, more kind of like tangible meaning and observe that in the heart and relax and have that equanimity meditation. Just join this prayer and meditate for every time, for a few minutes or whatever your time. Just really relax again. Actually, if you don't have the rush, if you have time, then just relax and meditate that. And that's, that's how we built up this, then this uh, uh, wishing bodhicitta. Yeah, that, and that is uh, my brief talk, and again we continue to talk tomorrow too. Thank you, okay. thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.